All right, so we have IGN's Elden Ring Shadow of Ear Tree DLC review. Now, this is IGN's review. Let's get the video. Here we go. We got uh, IGN's review. When I gave Elden Ring a 10 two years ago, I did so not just because it's an incredible game, okay. but also because it raised the bar for open world games as a whole. The way it encourages exploration, rewards curiosity, and challenges you to find your own individual solutions to difficult combat encounters by including tons of different viable weapons, okay. spells, and other build options. I wonder what is absolutely I think he's going to give it a 10 again. Now, From Software is back to raise the bar on everyone yet again. This time when it comes to what you would expect from a simple DLC. Shadow of the Air Tree may not do anything radically different from the base game. But this expansion oh, they played feels it too. like a okay, all right, hold version up. of that Let's same go. experience. Recapturing all the magic of playing Elden Ring for the first time with more content packed within than many full price games. It's unexpected. Oh, I hate those fingers. Oh my god, I hate those fingers so much. A ton of new build options to experiment with, as well as some of the most challenging and unforgettable I hate those boss fingers. battles oh my god. Souls fans will have ever seen. Alright, here we go. I think listen, pre-review, I think they're gonna give it a 10. That's what I think. Untarnished by Mitchell. Shout out to Mitchell. Let's go. I strolled into Shadow of the Air Tree thinking that I was some kind of Elden Lord badass. <laughs> Having defeated Melania, Moog, Plasudisax, the Elden Beast, and every other big That's threat true. around. That's true. My level 150 character was armed with fully upgraded gear and the maximum number of flasks. Oh, wait. Is that the first boss? You, it did not take very long for the Realm of Shadow to humble me. Wait, what? Oh! He's on fire up in here, but it's burning high. So Even though the only requirement to access the new areas is to beat Radon and Moog, which, granted, is no small feat, you're gonna want to overprepare before stepping foot into this new. Wait, is that hard? Because it is brutal. From Software definitely skirts the line between fair and unfair with some of the later boss designs. In oh Virginia. no! Perhaps getting closer than ever, but crucially, it never actually crosses that threshold. And that masterful tightrope walk, along with some truly spectacular boss design, results in some of the most oh, wow, that actually looks beautiful. satisfiling bosses. I love Elden his swords. Rain and the entire Souls like genre has to offer. Bro, it's look at not his just swords. the quality of those fights either. Erd Tree has them in quantity too. According to our count, there are more than 40 bosses, with 10 of those being the big showstopper fights that reward you with a remembrance upon defeat. Compare that to the more than 100 in the base game, and it's a significant chunk. Were this 40 in a DLC? It may not seem like the Realm of Shadow is that big, but it is incredibly dense because it's stacked in layers. Paths lead upwards towards ruins suspended in the sky, others delve deep beneath the surface, and some even put you in directions that you might not have believed you can even be pulled. You might find a hidden ladder tucked away in the far corner of a castle rampart, only to follow that trail for an hour before it eventually spills out into a totally new, otherwise inaccessible area. We got new but worlds? Even with all the discoveries to be made, I never felt lost or unsure of where I should go next. The main goal of this DLC is to follow the footsteps of the demigod Mikula, okay. who left his flesh behind and fled to the realm of shadow. Okay. These footsteps are marked by large crosses that elegantly serve as subtle signposts to let you know when you're in the vicinity of a plot critical path, All right. without it ever feeling like your hand is being held as you're nudged in one explicit direction. Huh. Were you guided here by kindly Mikula? Apart from the main quest, there's a host of new NPCs, including seven followers of Mikula that you'll encounter at various points in the journey. Each of them have their own small quest line that ties into the main story, and those can even have an effect on some of the later boss battles, okay. depending on your actions. Bail! Vile Bail! Oh no, I'm running. Oh, I'm running the other way. I'm legit running the other way. Casual enjoyer of Elden Ring's extensive lore compared to some of the scholars out hey, there. Hey, I'm a magic even user. my limited knowledge of the deeper plot, let me appreciate some of the fantastic, eye-opening revelations towards the end of the story that are well worth the effort of getting. I'm to. spamming. I'm a magic it's user. A I don't care. About 25 I... hours or so to beat the final boss of Shadow of the Air Tree. 25 but hours. I could easily see myself putting in another 15 or 20 on just this one playthrough. Really? I still have a handful of optional bosses oh, I need to go back to cross off my list. Pre-10. Areas on the map that I haven't fully explored, weapons and skills oh, I haven't got to play around with yet, and side quests that I want to follow to completion. Pre-10. That's pretty much exactly like when I completed my review of the base game I knew after it. about Pre 80 hours. Pre-10. Which makes sense because Shadow of the Air Tree is essentially a mini Elden Ring adventure. It condenses I mean, yeah, the obviously. whole experience down to something comparatively compact. All of it satisfyingly tuned specifically for endgame wow. characters 
who thought they've seen it all. And it looks good, bro. Like, why does it look better? Like, what? Bro, yeah, he's giving it a 10. He said he wants to go in and put another 15 hours in. That's well, a 10. Well, I haven't had any holy shit moments of awe, like the first time I took the elevator down to the Shifra River, exploration and discovery throughout the Realm of Shadow is still a delight thanks to its stellar art design, a great variety in the areas That's you true. get to explore, oh my God. and the tantalizing rewards pretty much everywhere you turn. The, the art design is beautiful. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. It's crazy. There are eight brand new weapon types, ranging from throwing knives to beast claws... Oh, that's me! No, I'm using those. Dachi samurai swords. No, I'm using those. The beast claws, th those My are mine. My favorite of the new arsenal, though, is the light great sword, specifically the Milady. Oh, True oh. to its name, the Milady has a very regal-looking moveset with combos that flow nicely into each other and hit hard, but are also relatively fast compared to actual great Ooh. swords. For me, it's a sweet spot. I actually swapped off of my powerful dual bandit curved sword bleed build to instead rock a strength and dexterity focused build using one of these and found great wow, success. Wow, bro, look the at the fire off the DLC. sword. That looks crazy. I experimented with a couple of other weapons as well, something that is possible thanks to the ample opportunities to collect a bunch more ancient dragon smithing stones of both the standard and somber varieties. However, in all my travels, oh, I, hate the I found boss. that while the new oh. weapon types are fun, I mean, there's certainly an appeal to going hand-to-hand -hand against an army of hands. Bro, I hate none those hand bosses. I hate them. The strength of the weapons I, I hate over them. Oh, the my God. They game. irritate me. They make me want to itch. Oh, my it's God. It's totally possible that there are some talismans I was missing to really make the new ones sing, but I was hoping to go through the entirety of Eritrea with a brand new build. Instead, I found myself swapping oh, back not. to my bread and butter bleed build to get the kind of damage that I needed when the going got tough. I'm not. I'm using my same build. <laughs> I'm not moving. Still, variety is uh -uh. the spice of life, and air tree is one hot dish. Wow, not only are there a ton of new bro, weapons, look at that. there are also plenty of new spells, ashes of war, spirit ash summons, and talismans to cover an enormous range of different playstyles. Wait, there's new. Th there's now a talisman that enhances two-handed attacks, one that decreases spellcasting time dramatically, but causes you to take increased damage. Another that increases the damage of abilities that involve stances, and another still that increases your damage every time you defeat an enemy. And yes, there are also plenty that are just better versions of very useful talismans that you probably already have. And there's no shame in sticking to what works. Okay. There are so many fun new builds that I couldn't help but wish that larval tears were a little more plentiful so I could respect my character a little more freely. I started to run out by the time I finished the campaign, and I still have a ton of different builds that I want to try. Yes. I don't think that's like an inconvenience. It's fine. The joy of freedom. The okay. journey through the Realm of Shadow is structured very similarly to the Lands Between, in that the map is split up into a number of different regions. Right from the get-go, you're able to head anywhere you want to. You could follow the initial Mikkel across to the very first legacy dungeon called Bellarat yeah. and deal with the new horrific scorpion enemies, Ew. or head across the bridge to the east and work your way over to the magic-filled castle. Bro, Ensis, scorpions are scary. Where you have to deal with this jerk. Who is that? Or you could find a way to bypass the need to go through either of those and get straight to the Skadu Altus, which oh. largely serves as the central hub of the Realm of Shadow. Then you could head directly towards the Shadow Keep, fighting your way to the top of it in order to take on one of the major bosses, or going through one of its other exits to explore otherwise inaccessible parts of the map. Okay. It's a liberating sense wow. of freedom. Wow. So you have like a lot of options. I like that a lot. Open world design. It's the base game just on a scale that isn't quite so vast. Of course, whether or not you should make a mad dash towards the Shadow Keep Bro, is another question entirely. Even Bro, though why this does is it look so content and you probably won't be leveling up quite as fast okay, as you oh, Bro, he is campaign, spamming that move. There is a separate power scaling system that only works while you're within the Realm of Shadow. Scattered throughout the lands are Skadu Tree fragments that you can collect and turn in at Sites of Grace to increase your overall damage and resistances. Likewise, you can also find revered Spirit Ash Blessings to increase the damage and survivability of your spirit ash summons. Okay. These are two very smart inclusions as they add a much needed sense of progression, a valuable reward for exploration, and something else to hunt for if you're getting wrecked by a uh -oh. boss and need to come back when you're stronger. Oh. All while cleverly preserving some of the original and game's balance if you're bravely tackling this DLC before circling back to beat the full game. Ver they're giving it, bro, he's giving it a 10. This is a pre 10, bro. From Software says that Shadow of the Air Tree is the only expansion Elden Ring will get. So it's fortunate that it's hard to imagine a Wait, this is the last this is the last DLC? As long as you're not hoping for it to do anything radically outside the box. Everything that I loved about the original has been condensed into an incredibly tight package. One that's the size what of the What is he gonna give it? He's gonna give it a ten on its own. 
and can only really be considered small in comparison to the absolutely massive world of Elden Ring. He's complimenting too much. This is a 10. The tree is absolutely jam packed with secrets, valuable treasures, challenging bosses. If I get it, if I get it right, you gotta subscribe. If I get it, if I get the verdict right. As well as cool new weapons, spells, ashes of war, spirit ashes, talismans, and more to uh -huh. play around with and use to find He's even more novel too much. ways to tackle its memorable it's battles. It's a 10. Add on some very interesting oh, lore revelations, yeah, yeah, it's a not 10. to mention the same spectacular visual design and stellar music that accompanies its larger than life bosses. It's a 10. And you've got what is certainly one of the best DLC I told expansions you. I told I've you. ever played. I told you. 